What exactly is a holding company, also known as a parent company? Now, you've probably heard or read how some of the bigger organizations such as Facebook and Google are structured with and use holding companies to their advantage. And perhaps you are wondering, can I do this for my business here in the UK? In this video, we will cover what exactly is a holding or parent company, three ways a holding company could benefit your small business, and finally, what is the tax position of a holding company? Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date with all of our latest content. This really helps us to produce more helpful videos and to get you free quality advice from real qualified accountants. A holding company in accordance with the Companies Act of 2006, Section 1159 can be described and defined as follows. Number one, it holds a majority of the voting rights in the undertaking, also known as a subsidiary. Number two, it is a member of the subsidiary and has the right to appoint or remove a majority of its board of directors. And number three, it has the right to exercise a dominant influence over the undertaking, i.e. the subsidiary. Now, this is all very technical speak, so what does this actually mean in simple English? Let's illustrate with an example. You have a limited company called Happy Limited that trades in goods and services and earns revenue from its trading activities. The present structure is that you personally own 100% of the share capital of Happy Limited and you are also the sole director of the company. All nice and simple so far. Now, you've been advised for reasons we will cover later on in the video to create a holding company or a parent company for Happy Limited. Therefore, Happy Holdings Limited has been created to hold 100% of the shares in Happy Limited, and it has become the parent company, and Happy Limited has become what is known as a subsidiary company. You as an individual will still be a director of Happy Limited, but the difference now is that your shareholding will be in Happy Holdings Limited. In this example, let's say it's 100%. You will also be a director of Happy Holdings Limited and could even appoint another director or a non-executive director to create a board of directors. Happy Holdings Limited satisfies the definitions of the Companies Act 2006 listed earlier and it holds 100% of Happy Limited and assuming the shares have full voting rights effectively exercises control over Happy Limited. Now this example is quite a simple one for explanation purposes but in reality there could be different variations of shareholdings, voting rights and other permutations depending on your circumstances and objectives so we always recommend you seek professional advice here. Before we continue with today's video, we're thrilled to be launching the Accounting and Tax Academy membership site early next year. We'll be posting downloadable resources, tax tutorials, and in-depth courses that you can't access anywhere else. And the best part is it's absolutely free to join. Head to the link in the description box below and register your interest today. So the key question is, why would you create and have a holding company for your business? What are the potential benefits, both tax and non-tax wise? Here are just three of many ways you could materially benefit from having a UK holding company. Number one is the safeguarding of assets, whether tangible, intangible, or even surplus cash. Now, this is a big one, and whilst it's not directly a tax benefit, it could prove crucial if your trading limited company business falls into difficulty and perhaps becomes insolvent. By separating out key assets such as your website, customer databases, and any other tangible or intangible assets, these could be saved from the clutches of insolvency and reverting to the crown. In many of today's businesses, intellectual property is becoming a key asset and that is something you will really want to protect. Number two is the acquisition and disposal of shares of other companies and businesses. If part of your business growth strategy is to acquire, whether in whole or part, existing businesses that align with your target market, product, services, or overall strategy, then using a holding company structure can yield benefits. This is also applicable if you wanted to buy your own non-UK based company's shares or assets. And number three, a holding company structure has certain tax breaks and advantages. Now these are elaborated upon in the next section. 
A holding company itself is quite often just another limited company entity. One of the key ways a holding company generates incoming funds is by way of dividends from its subsidiaries. And these dividends are not subject to corporation tax in the holding company, they are an exempt income. And what's more, if you have a UK holding company and a non-UK based subsidiary trading company, subject to certain conditions, even foreign received dividends to the UK company can potentially be exempt from corporation tax. Secondly, there is what is known as the substantial shareholder exemption on a disposal of shares by a holding company relating to capital gains tax. In simple language, if your holding company sold, say, all of the shares in a subsidiary trading company it held for, let's say, £1 million and made a capital gain of this amount, it would be exempt from corporation tax in the holding company subject to satisfying the rules and conditions of the substantial shareholder exemption. In comparison, if you were to dispose of the same shares personally and made the same amount of capital gains, you could potentially be subject to capital gains tax of up to 20%. If you think that your business could benefit from a holding company structure and you're not sure where to start, then head to the link in the description box below to get some information on how you can get started with this. I hope this video has helped you gain more of an understanding of a holding company and some of its benefits and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let me know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony Daniel for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.